Novak Djokovic is one of the most mentally tough tennis players of all time, but it's not for the reason that most people think. We've all been fooled about mentally tough athletes, but thankfully Novak revealed the truth in this recent 60 Minutes interview. Can I tell you what one of the hardest things about covering you is? People understand big muscles and speed and grace. Mental strength, which is what I think is your great gift, is much harder to articulate. Can you I would help have to correct explain? you. I have to yeah, correct you, right, it's correct. not a gift. It's something that comes with work. You train for the mental side the way you would your serve or your, Absolutely. your forehand. He doesn't win record-breaking match after record-breaking match on the biggest stages in all of tennis because of some kind of innate mental talent he's been gifted with. Instead, he's had to work at it. Over time, he's trained the ability to play his best when it really matters the most, which is fantastic news for the rest of us normal tennis players because it means that we can do the same thing. How do we do that? Here's what Novak says. There are different techniques. Conscious breathing is a big part, especially in the moments when you're under tension. It sounds a little hokey, but next time you play tennis and a big point is coming up, try focusing all of your attention on your heart rate and your breathing. Consciously take a few big breaths, fully exhale, and just notice your heartbeat slowing down. Developing those kinds of habits can help keep you grounded and in the present instead of losing control of your body and emotions when pressure is high. By the way, did you notice Novak just said that he feels tension during matches? Here's more on that. I think a lot of people think, oh, in the moment, Novak's so locked in. You're saying this is all part of a process. Oh, I mean, I might appear maybe locked in, but, you know, trust me, there's a storm inside. And, you know, the biggest always battle is within, right? I don't know about you, but for me, hearing one of the best tennis players of all time say that makes me feel a whole lot better about my struggles on the court. Being a world-class tennis player isn't about being some kind of robot without emotions or fears or frustrations. Please know that when, not if, you feel those things, you're not doing it wrong and you're not broken. Being a great competitor is all about how you respond to those feelings, not if you have them or not. Listen to Novak articulate his feelings in a little bit more detail. Take us in there. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, you have your doubts and fears. I feel it every single match. I don't like this kind of a mindset that I see a lot in sports, like just think positive thoughts, be optimistic. There is no room for failure. There is no room for, you know, uh, doubts and stuff like this. It's, it's impossible you to don't do buy that. that. You are a human being. The difference, I guess, between the guys who are able to be biggest champions and the ones that are struggling to get to the highest level is the ability to not stay in those emotions for too long. Please don't fall for the deception that so many other tennis players have bought into, hook, line, and sinker. That to be successful on the court, you have to block negativity, pretend that pressure isn't real, or even try to trick yourself into thinking that you don't care about the outcome, or that the score is actually different than it is, or a million other ways of faking your way into confidence. My return of serve is awesome. I am mentally strong. It doesn't work. Novak Djokovic has doubts and fears every single match. So please give yourself the permission to feel those things too. So how do we not stay in those emotions for too long? So for me, it's really relatively short. So as soon as I experience it, I acknowledge it. I maybe, you know, burst, I scream on the court, whatever happens. But then I'm able to bounce back and reset. So here's the simple process that Novak follows on the court. Step one, feel the emotions that make you human. It might be anger, frustration, fear, or anxiety. Step two, acknowledge what's happening and accept the fact that you're in a challenging situation. And step three, reset your focus and energy on something specific that is productive in the present moment. This is simple, but not easy. You can improve your ability to do it through experience, repetition, and work, just like Novak has. The reality is, he hasn't always been so mentally tough. Here's an example of that. I'm playing Nadal in Roland Garros, and I have his locker next to my locker, right? So we are so close, and we're trying to give each other space, but then locker room is also not that big. 
and the way you jump around like Nadal does. Before we go out on the court in the locker room, he's doing sprints next to you. I can even hear the music he's listening to, you know, in his headphones. So, you know, it's pissing me off. So way before, way before. you hit the first ball, this Absolutely. competition started. Absolutely. Early in my career, I didn't realize how old that's part of the scenario. Winning at tennis is so much more than forehands, backhands, and serves. It's more than strategy and targets and fitness and equipment, too. It's about wrestling with your imperfections as a human, your insecurities and your emotional blind spots, and doing battle with the self in addition to challenges that our opponents throw our way. This is why we love tennis, but also why it can make us absolutely crazy when we lose the mental battle and perform way, way below our technical abilities. It even pushes the best players in the world over the edge. How do you handle it when you make these sort of errors and lapses when you break a racket or when your emotions get the better of you? Well, look, you know, I, I have broken rackets in my life, you know, no doubt about it. And I'm not proud about, about that. And I'm ashamed of myself when I do that, no doubt. But at the same time, you know, I accept myself as a flawed human being. Hopefully, hearing Novak talk about the reality of the mental game has opened your eyes to a new possibility, that you should stop fighting what makes you human and instead practice returning to the present moments as quickly as possible. I'd love to show you exactly how to do that in one of my two-day mental toughness boot camps. For more information, shoot me an email to ian at essentialtennis.com.